Hey, what's up, Chiefs Kingdom? Welcome to another special episode of Outside the Trenches. I'm BJ Kissel, and joined by a very special guest this week to talk about some very important things that have been going on or going to be going on in the future. In Ebony Reed, the fiance of the late great Therese Paler. Ebony, thank you so much for joining us. Um, it, it's nice to finally see you in person. We've been texting, but uh, it's always good to catch up with you. BJ, it's good to see you too. Thank you for having me. Not a problem. I know that we both got the the all juice. Uh, we do. <laughs> gear We're rocking on and, our gear. Yes, we are. And you have some news that I know Chiefs Kingdom and everyone listening to this show has been following uh, the Therese Paler Scholarship Fund at Howard University and the money that everyone was chipping in to raise and you know Let It Fly Media and their two founders Andrew Carter and Ben Walnick uh, mm-hmm. did a little camp matching campaign to they help. Did get that over the edge and phenomenal from them and from let it fly. But, uh, you've got some news, uh, to share with all of us. And just for the record, we are recording on Wednesday because this is such good news that you have a busy schedule of people you're talking with. So this is posting on Friday, but we are actually recording on Wednesday, but what do you have for us, Ebony? Right. So, um, I'm really happy and proud to announce that on Friday, um, which is when everybody will see this, um, you know, podcast that, Um, Teresa's scholarship has become officially endowed at Howard and more than $100,000 has been raised and is in hand at Howard. And um, this is really, really significant um, because what it means is that his scholarship will never go away, that it will um, be in place for, you know, generations of students at Howard that will receive funding through the interest from the endowment. And it has not been, um, you know, e- it's not easy to fundraise in good economic times, right? Mm-hmm. Because there's so many worthy causes out there and there's so many needs in so many different communities. But to be able to do this in a pandemic, I am so very grateful to the journalism community um, that supported us at a corporate level, but then, you know, also at the community level, there were people donating, um, you know, um, $10 as they could. And that's really, really significant because all of those donations added up to push us over the $100,000 mark. And um, it's just really special. And I know that Therese would be really pleased. I mean, he and I had talked for a long time about the fact that he wanted to have a scholarship in his name at Howard someday. And, you know, I remember you know, when we had that conversation one night as we were getting in bed and he was like, yeah, I would, you know, really like to have a scholarship someday, Ebony. And I said, well, how much do we think that would cost? And he said, I don't know, like maybe we need to pull together 25,000 or something like that. And I said, well, I said, you know, I'll put it on the list, honey, because, (laughs) you know, um, I was saying this to a friend the other day, you know, it isn't like Therese and I came from generational wealth. So it, it wasn't going to be like, I would easily be able to just comfortably write a check for 100,000 and say, here's his endowment, Howard, not possible. So the community effort to make this happen has been so significant. And I'm so, so grateful. I mean, um, there are Chiefs fans from Europe that reached out to me. There are journalists from Europe, journalists from Egypt, um, you know, that have been in touch, um, you know, to really help make this happen. And also on Friday, you know, we're celebrating um, Therese in the community. You know, Mayor Lucas has signed a proclamation making it Therese A. Paler Day in Kansas Hmm. City. The Chiefs will honor him before um, Friday's, you know, preseason home game. And so it really is a day of a lot of celebration for Therese and his parents will be here, um, which is really significant for them to come back to Kansas City um, and feel the love of this community. And I'm really glad that they were able um, to make that trip from Detroit. Yeah, I I don't think that a lot of that anyone in Chiefs Kingdom is going to be surprised to see the way that they rally around and that they, they support people. We've seen that over the years. And for someone um, that was so widely respected, um, not only for his professional abilities, but for, for those of us who knew him beyond what he did, yeah. um, you know, as a football journalist and being the best out there at that, um, I was blown away. And you and I have spoke about this, mm-hmm. about you think you knew someone. And I feel like Teresa and I knew each other for our points in our lives. We were we were close. Mm-hmm. We were friends. 
I learned so much more about the depth of who he was as a person and not just a sports media, you know, professional. Mm -hmm. When we went back to his service in Detroit, uh, when I went back with Herbie and hearing the stories of how accomplished he was as a academic and not just in sports, Mm -hmm. but just in general Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. the ways that he gives back. But I do want to share one story because this resonated with me and you told me this and I hope it's okay. But, um, you told me a story about your first day uh, working at the Wall Street Journal mm-hmm. and that it was so important to you and it was so important to Therese and it meant so much to you uh, because like what you talked about, you were creating something that you did on your own. You didn't have outside help. You you gr- you guys both grinded through to be the best at the top of what you do. And for Therese to have so much love for you to go with you and walk you to the front door of the Wall Street Journal on your first day. I'm very sorry. Um, it's okay. I, you just for didn't people, make me cry, BJ. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, I need, it's important that people know that it wasn't just a guy that you loved listening to on his radio show on Mondays with Bink or mm-hmm. watching his videos on YouTube um, or Yahoo or wherever he was mm-hmm. when we followed all his content. That mm-hmm. This is a guy that was much more than just a phenomenal person that we saw on TV mm-hmm. that every mm-hmm. aspect of his life was amazing. But uh, would you talk about you know, the things that he did that weren't sports related that are going to have an impact on the community. Um, I just want to give you a platform and opportunity to speak about a side of the guy that needs to be known at this point when we talk about legacy and you're donating, you're not donating money just because he was a great journalist, you're donating money because he was a phenomenal person that the way that you set up and the way that you led this Ebony, um, obviously being closer, having known him, I don't think that I've ever heard of a foundation, a scholarship, a way to honor somebody that's more perfectly fit than the Howard scholarship for Therese, because Mm -hmm. he and I didn't have a lot of conversations about that, but Mm -hmm. I know that that was important to him just because that's who he was. And it's just a perfect fit. Yeah. Yeah. Therese was um, very proud to be a Howard alum. Um, He was a regular contributor to the university. Um, He graduated magna cum laude. Um, So the students who are recipients of this, um, of the endowed scholarship in the future, they'll have to have a 3.0 GPA that really speaks to, you know, a love of scholarship and doing well in their studies. Um, You know, Therese also was a lifelong learner. You know, we have... Um, you know, a library in our home um, of a couple bookshelves with books. And, you know, um, months before he passed away, you know, he was reading um, Barack Obama's book, The Promised Land, you know, so like he was really into, um, you know, things that were outside of sports. In addition, you know, he was obviously deeply, everybody knows his, his knowledge of sports is very deep. But Therese was concerned about, you know, the, um, the racial wealth gap. He was concerned about um, what the pandemic was doing to families led by women and black and brown communities. He was concerned about gun violence. I mean, we were talking about all of these things in our home. And, you know, um, one of the stories that he did at the height of the pandemic, I want to say it was April-ish of uh, 2020, so the first spring of the pandemic, you know, it was looking at Kansas City and what was happening here and how the city was faring, you know, with the with the pandemic. And I remember the weekend before he wrote it, we went to our local high B um, to get our groceries. And it was the first time at this particular high B that we'd ever seen um, a security person standing out front of the store. And it really got like both of our it got our attention. And of course, that was, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, I mean, there were videos online of panic buying and people being scared and afraid of breaks in the food chain and all these things. And, you know, we just came home and, you know, we're just really we were really like impacted by that imagery and thinking about, you know, what did this mean? And Therese was like, okay, you know. I'm going to check in with my people. You need to get on the phone with your people, especially, you know, our immediate elderly relatives. He was like, you know, where are we at with your grandmother? You know, does she have all the food she needs? You know, and so that was the kind of person, you know, that um, that Therese was is, you know, he was, you know, deeply concerned about um, community and, um, you know, and social justice, you know, issues for sure. That was a couple, I think you and I had talked about it, you know, going back mm-hmm. to, to Juneteenth and things that, you know, 
me as a white guy I grew up in Johnson County trying to speak out and have thoughts about these that Therese is one of the guys that you lean, that I leaned on he was a friend and I felt like he mm-hmm. could speak freely and have those things but um, I want to get back to the scholarship a little bit because mm-hmm. and I do want to tell anyone who's listening to this if you go down to the comment section we will place a link if you want to continue to donate because as great as it is that the legacy is solidified forever uh, with the endowed scholarship um, the more money that's raised within Therese's legacy and honoring him can help more students as we go down the road. And I know it was really important for you um, leading this behind the scenes to get it there so you could start helping students right away. And luckily you will be able to do that. And I want to give you a chance to, to speak on what that process might look like or where we're at, where you're at with it now that it has hit right. that. But um, can you speak to what it means to, to continue to build this and that it's not just, hey, congratulations, we're all done here because- right. Honoring Therese is honoring his legacy through helping so many students that were important to him. And the more we can help, the more we spread his legacy. And that's only a good thing. Absolutely. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit, BJ, about like what an endowment means, because I think um, maybe everybody may not know like what it means and how it's different from just a regular scholarship. And then I also want to give, you know, a shout to Power Mizzou, which also um, already had an endowed scholarship here in Missouri and uh, renamed it in in memory of Therese. And I want to talk a little bit about that, too. Um, So the scholarship at Howard was initially set up as like a special fund. And that gave um, the dean at Howard discretion to use the funds, you know, as she would see fit to further the education of students there. Um, But at Howard, when a fund has more than $100,000 in it, then it can become an endowment. And what that means is that the money is set up so that it never spins down. So it is the interest on the 100,000 or greater as we continue to grow it that will actually pay out the scholarships to students. Um, And that's really um, speaks to why we will continue to, you know, fundraise for, you know, years to come. I mean, I think that this will be a project for me in terms of fundraising for Teresa's scholarship for the rest of my life. Like, I don't see it as something that I will ever stop doing. Um, because I just think it is just that, you know, um, important for Howard and also for, you know, for his legacy. On the Mizzou por- portion, um, you know, Power Mizzou um, has an alumni scholarship through the journalism school. I'm a proud alum um, from the journalism school and went back there when I first uh, rejoined um, Therese here in Missouri and was on faculty there and taught journalism. So um, my, you know, my roots are deep there at the journalism school here in the state. And uh, what Power Mizzou did was they renamed their scholarship in memory of Therese. And um, it has been really touching to watch how my fellow alums have supported that scholarship because, you know, while I've been virtually out and a little bit publicly out um, talking with people to fundraise for Howard, um, you know, other people, alums of Mizzou, have also been giving to that scholarship to support it. And it was really touching to me when I um, came back from a trip, um, you know, back in June, and I had a letter from the University of Missouri saying, you know, dear Ebony, we want to let you know about all the people that have given to Teresa's scholarship here at Mizzou. And I mean, to me, that is just, it's beyond special. Um, I don't know of another situation where um, someone passes away and they have a scholarship at their alma mater and then people start one up at another institution (laughs) where their partner went to school. Like it's just, um, it's very special. Yeah. See, DJ, a, I'm making, I'm making you cry. I'm, tr- I'm trying. <laughs> Tell everybody that. Um, no, it's fine. I, I wanted to say this because I, it's not just me. It's, it's all of Chiefs Kingdom, and I'm just speaking mm-hmm. on behalf of them right now. That when you say, you know, you're going to be dedicating and doing this for the rest of your life, I'm telling you that not just me. There are a lot of people that feel very, very strongly about. Therese as a person and not just being great at what he did, but who he was as a person. And I'm telling you on the record with all the people watching, I will help you for the rest of my life in honoring our friend. Um, I know you will. And there's a lot of people. It's not just me. There's a lot of people that are in that same boat. But um, let's get to Friday night. Let's talk about a a celebration. (laughs) Uh, What are you looking forward to most with Friday night? You know, I'm bringing the family out. Uh, We'll be down there in the bowl. Hopefully we can catch up. But um, yeah. 
the the you're gonna get this is a this is a warm up for you. So when you go on Friday, I guess later today is this post, but um, you're gonna have a lot of people that that meant a lot that Therese meant a lot to them, and they meant a lot to Therese as well. Yeah, um, that I'm sure it's gonna be bittersweet in a lot of ways. Definitely, um, but very sweet. So the Chiefs will um, honor Therese in a program before the game. Um, and so um, I'll be there with Therese's parents and also a very good friend of mine from um, from Chicago who's come um, throughout the summer um, to check in on me. And so, um, you know, I don't know all the details of the program, but I know that some of um, Therese's colleagues will speak and there'll be um, a presentation at that program. Um, so that that's what will happen Friday. Yeah. Okay. I am. Um... I, I want to give a special, there have been so many people and so many organizations that have done some phenomenal things. And even though I don't work at the, work at the chiefs anymore, mm -hmm. the support that they've shown you and throughout this process and, and Therese and honoring him, it's been really cool to see, um, from somebody that, that kind of knows, um, everybody who's involved and in how, uh, respected he was in that building, um, mm -hmm. and his position, uh, it's around the league. It's not always, um, not everybody has the, the pedigree to carry themselves and have relationships and do a tough mm -hmm. job the right way and gain respect mm -hmm. of everyone in the process. Uh, mm -hmm. I also want to have, give you the opportunity because I know another project that Therese uh, and you had talked about that you were working on as a book um, that isn't sports related, but something that you're working yeah. on that I know Therese believed in as well. And I want to give you an opportunity to platform to, to speak about things that again, were one of those, you didn't know that these were things that were really important to him and obviously to you as well and give you the opportunity to, to chat about that. Sure. Thanks, BJ. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I mentioned earlier that Therese and I have been talking about, you know, the um, the racial wealth gap during the pandemic. And, you know, we've been looking at how different families were impacted. You know, I, I work at the Wall Street Journal. And um, and so a lot of stories have been published about how like more than 80 percent of women um, made up the percentage of people that left the workforce. Um, and so, you know, that's really significant too. And I'll come back to that because I'm on a, a local board that really speaks to women's civic and economic empowerment here um, in Kansas City and nationally. But um, my, um, you know, good friend, and she's um, a phenomenal journalist, Louise Story, she and I were also talking about these issues and we've partner up, partnered up on a book called The Black Dollar. Um, and it is a historical um, look at race and money in the United States. And we're gonna be tracing back um, in history and coming forward. And we're really excited about it. We've been um, doing interviews around the country um, for the book project. Um, Therese was aware of it. He was a major supporter of it. He read some of the mm -hmm. early uh, versions of our proposal. And um, I'll just tell you, you know, you put two journalists in the house together, everybody's got <laughs> an opinion. So he was uh, more than happy to <laughs> you know, share his and um, was excited to see what the work would become and how it would develop. And so um, that is a project I'm working on. Um, We're backed by HarperCollins, which is our publisher. Um, and so we'll be working on that um, and eventually, you know, um, published by HarperCollins. But um, the other thing I wanted to circle back to when we talk about the pandemic and the impact on communities, you know, we know that um, you know, women have been impacted by the pandemic and many of them have left the workforce. We know that from research um, and articles that have been published. And so one of the things that Therese was really excited about for me to be in service to the Kansas City community. Um, and so I'm on the board of United We, um, formerly known as the Kansas City Women's Foundation and you know the organization is really focused on the civic and economic empowerment of women. You know, right now, um, United We is having um, listening sessions around the state or around um, economic issues facing women. Um, we have um, an event coming up September the 29th. I'll give you the link so you can share that too in the chat. Um, we work for change, um, and so I'm really excited about the organization's work. And to be part of it, you know, um, as a board member, that's special, and it's it it's is. real. It's real. Uh, to to take mm -hmm. a line from Andy Reid that he used to say all the time about anything mm -hmm. is like, "What's real?" And the research, the the work that you're doing, it's real. 
it's it's the research it's the how we got here actually not how we kind of spin it and paint it like here's what what happened without knowing or reading it i'm looking forward to reading it whenever it's done um but ebony Thank you so much. And before you know, we wrap up this episode. And thank you everybody for listening. And again, uh, head out, head down to that comment section and donate um, to this scholarship because it is honoring somebody that we all knew and respected. Uh, but I mean, before we wrap up this episode, mm-hmm. besides donate, what else can can people do besides buying the all juice stuff that you can find anywhere yeah. on social media? What else yeah. can people do to support you? Support uh, support uh, honoring Therese in a way that um, you see best fit. You know, I just, um, one of the things that Therese um, was really big on was just us educating ourselves um, mm. and, you know, having as much information um, as we could on topics. And so, you know, I think one of the ways that people can honor him um, is to read widely, you know, um, you know, to not just um, be focused in one sort of area. Um, but like I mentioned, you know, he was reading President Obama's, you know, book. I mean, literature across spectrums. You know, I think that's something people can do. Um, you know, the all juice um, shirts. We'll get those links out there too. Um, if you're in a position to mentor someone, you know, Therese had a lot of conversations with a lot of um, colleagues, some newer to the field. Um, and we were involved in conversations around how we could help people. If you're in a position to mentor someone, that's something that you can do. Um, so I think there are a lot of things that people can do. And um, I really thank you, you know, BJ, for inviting me to, to have me on. Absolutely. It, it was a, my pleasure. Uh, I'm glad we got a chance to do this. And I'm glad we got to do when we talked about all this before mm-hmm. that we got mm-hmm. there and that you behind yeah. the scenes. Um, thank you for what you did and the effort that you put behind. It feels weird saying that um, because it meant so much to you, but from the outside, mm-hmm. it, it means something I think to everyone that it got to this point point. we get to honor him. So thank you for that. And again, thank you everybody for listening. Uh, head down to the comment section if you're on YouTube, uh, but if you're listening on the audio, you can still go to the show platform. We'll put all the links below and we're going to have a lot of links. So you got a lot of stuff to <laughs> click on uh, from Ebony, but everybody enjoy the game later tonight. The final preseason game as the Chiefs get ready for the regular season. But again, Ebony, thank you so much. And she's Kingdom. We'll see you next time.